move on to the middleweight championship (laughs) with Israel Adesanya defending his belt against, what is it, Alex Pereira? Pereira, yeah. I don't know. I've heard different pronunciations. I think everybody's trying to fake it till they make it on this guy's last name. Pereira. What's his first name? Is it Alex? Alex. Alex. We call him Alex. (laughs) So this man comes in dressed in face paint and everything for the weigh-in, the ceremonial weigh-in. He looks like just an, an just a an just Amazonian a tribal warrior. Yeah, an Amazonian yeah. tribal warrior, and uh, he's from Brazil. He's facing, um, you know, Israel Adesanya, and um, you know, incredible fight. You know, I didn't realize what a great and elite fighter is he was until he really showed the display of skill. It was like he was in control of every cell in his body all operating in unison the way he wanted him to. He was kicking like a whip. His punches, from a, for a man who was visibly smaller in frame size and maybe a bit in height, were crisp and hard as fuck. He was rocking Alex Pereira. and He um, rocked him towards the end of the first round damn well good. And per- Pereira was just, uh, he was doing a little bit of, uh, yeah. <laughs> he's, he was wobbly a little bit. Um, but, yeah, he, Adesanya controlled that whole fight. Up to the point he got <laughs> he got rocked. And that's again bad position. Theme of the night. Just fights the fight can be going your way ninety percent of it. But in this game, all you need is that one time out of ten to completely chip the entire momentum of the fight, change the whole course of the fight in the blink of an eye. That's all it takes. And when you got a guy like uh Alex in there, Mr. Stone Fists, I mean that's, there's a reason that's why that's they call his nickname, right? Yeah, it's like Stone Hands, Stone Fist. Like it's like holy shit! I see how he got his nickname. Like this guy has concrete for hands. It's it's crazy, and it's a repeat of the past. You know when they had their kickboxing bout. It's just you have Adesanya controlling the fight, putting on a master class. I mean, he really it's a, it's a master class in fighting. You really can't fight much better and he's not controlled and in terms of how you actually fight assassin like person yeah he doesn't have a ton of power he doesn't have like the power that alex does but in terms of like his precision his fight iq the way he executes everything he does he did everything you could humanly possibly do to basically win that fight it's just you know what did mcgregor say like when certain people connect the human body cannot withstand it human chin cannot withstand it it's just they're he just has a physical limitation of getting hit by a fucking monster with that much power. Like you, you just you just one slip up, and that's it. You get, you get lucky and connect, lights out. So some people are freaks of nature. Like you have like a like a Nate Diaz that can take shot after shot after shot like a zombie, and just keep, and many years of doing it. Yes, he it, defies the odds. It's it's unreal how much punishment you can you can take because he got knocked out with a head kick before or a knee kick, and it was a bad knockout, but just. Recovered very well from it. Yeah, just durable as they come. Yeah, very much so. And but I just don't think Adesanya has that. S- some people are just are built different. They can take more more force, more punishment, and some can take less. So, but still, I think I don't I don't think you could have fought a better fight, like a like a smarter fight or more well executed fight than he did. And he even went outside his comfort <coughs> zone. You know, took Alex down. Showed some ground game, which he never does, was and he really did well. Could have control uh, against so, a bigger man, weighing him down like a wet blanket, hooking in where he needed to with his legs to keep him down. Um, he did as bad as good as you can, but got you know brute force won the day and a good did. solid shot. Um, his corner hiked him up and told him that's what he needed to do. He executed, and so as far as the history of this fight goes, Israel Sanya and Alex Pereira have fought each other three times. Um, and so two of them were in kickboxing. One of them was on the decision on points that it went to Pereira. Uh, you know, we're talking about two guys who are probably both world champion kickboxers. The second time was a knockout. Um, Izzy got caught. Not as he did, definitely a different fighter now than he was when he got knocked out that time. And I think those are, you know, the only losses he has, I think, are to Pereira. I'm not certain about that. But in any event, Izzy... It seemed like going into the fight last night, the way he controlled the fight is as if there was no history between them before, and this was a clean slate. He's coming out calm, cool, collect, crisp, dangerous, you know, just an all-around elite fighter. I mean, what I saw out of him last night was such a controlled fight. Um, 
even though you're, he was not shying away from the danger zone, such a controlled fight that, uh, you know, it was it was elite. Like, he looks like a pound-for-pound pound best. I don't... There's anybody who fights better than that. Like, show me the more well-rounded game because he was good in every aspect. Yeah. From, it's from good striking with his legs, with leg kicks, to striking with his fist and finding ways, like, not only to sneak in punches in weird places and get around somebody's guard and hit him in the head... But also dodge a lot of them. Like they call him the last style bender. He's like in the Matrix. He's weaving around. It's hard to believe it's real. And dodged a lot of shots until finally in the fourth round or fifth round. They're in the last round of the fight. Gets caught with really heavy hands. And surprisingly, Pereira was able to throw that kind of power after losing four rounds of a fighter. Some I think people were saying it was three to one, but I'm like, I don't know. The round of the if Pereira won one early, it was close round, I think, no matter what, because Izzy seemed to be in control of the entire fight. Yeah, it seemed that way to me. If he just if Alex hadn't connected, that was Izzy's fight easily. That was definitely clear, clearly going in his favor up until that point. But that's how the mixed martial arts goes. It all changes in the blink of an eye. And you know, let's talk that stoppage for a minute. You know, some people okay, had, yeah, let's mention that as well. Had talked about was that an early stoppage? Yeah. I mean, Izzy was rocked. Like he was. He was in all kinds of trouble, but he was still on his feet. It wasn't like he had gone down. He was kind of uh, McGregoring like he did with um, Money Mayweather. So was it? And I think we said before, like we, there's there's a, a stoppage threshold, a right? Bad there's, stop, there's a bad stop, a good stop, and a stop that's too late. Yeah. So there's bad stop, good stop, and there's a th- certain threshold you have. Um, in between, you know, bad stop and good stop, and it's still within the good stop threshold. Yes, but in the in the direction of a bad stop, it's still kind of it's still closer. It was on the bad the side of a good stop. It was on the bad side of a good stop because uh, you can make an argument. This guy was still on his feet. He was still he was still moving. I don't know that he was. He, he wasn't out on his feet, so he was he in was a in position the, where it was like. Um, what what my yoga instructor uh, would say is like a halfway bend. Yeah. So he was like, his head was, he was down. He hadn't dodge. collapsed he to the point to... where his legs gave out yeah. way. He was he was up, and I think he was trying to dodge it. Badly rocked, but still trying to find a way out of the position he was in to maybe start throwing something back or get away to recompose himself. And that could have been one of those situations like where you have just a f- haymaker out of nowhere that changes the course of the fight. Do I think that would have happened? No, I, I don't think he think would have so, gotten yeah. put on his ass and knocked out. But I it would have been nice to, to know for sure. Yes, yeah, to have that certainty. Yeah, to see like okay, he it was a clean knockout. There's nothing he could have did to stop it. That was, and I said that a little bit. I don't think everybody else kept, caught on on that because like, I've been watching these for a while. You have too, so we're kind of maybe more in tune to it than than a, than a lot of people watching with us, but we're bringing people into the fold and kind of showing them something new and the excitement that we feel from it is contagious as well. I think everybody here felt that last night, um, you know, between the atmosphere of the big screen, the surround sound and the energy and, you know, just the energy is the surround sound helps because it feels like you're there. So you're feeling like almost what it's like to be in the crowd when, when there's a clean knockout. Um, you know what I mean? Like I think when Michael Chandler upkicked Tony Ferguson in the chin, everybody was on the same page. Everybody yeah. stands up out of their seat. <laughs> It's just this energetic thing. It's like, oh, my God, it's it's hard to believe we're witnessing this right now. And uh, in any event, um, you know, we, we we saw that last night as far as the stoppage. It was on the bad side of a good stoppage. It was like, you know, when a guy's about to lose his championship belt on the world stage and it's the fifth round, I think you need to let the guy do a clean finish because this was not a situation where he was pinned to the ground and his head was just getting wailed on or something and it was going on for a good 20 seconds. Yeah, it wasn't was, that definite He's trying to, to bob and move a little bit. He's still on his feet. He appealed to the ref immediately after, like, he's like, he's like, you could have gave me a little bit more, you know, like, he was, he was still, they called it as a TKO, but he still had his wits about him at the end. When he appealed to the ref right away, like, he could have gave me a little second. I think he was probably seeing stars pretty sure. bad, but knows that he has... He lives in the shadow realm of the Twilight Zone, where he can, if anybody can pull it out, he can. And it's a shame because of their history that he it wasn't just like let the guy finish him, because otherwise you need to let him ride it out, give him the benefit of the doubt to hold the belt, but also a good stoppage because you could tell he was clearly rocked, he was compromised. You can see it. You're watching it happen, and so hey, it is what it is. But I think, you know, God, it would be interesting to see you know that fight again because. 
he has all the tools to do it. Just it didn't work out for him that night. You know, brute strength and force and power won the day. Um, you know, and I, but but if you know, it's it's crazy to think that Izzy could maybe even get better and come back and win. But I think if with anybody is possible, it's him. And I, I feel like we kind of talked about this earlier. You know, I know Izzy probably wants a rematch. He's beaten everybody in that division. It's like who else are you really going to put him against? But I think like you need to air things out a little bit and just sharpen your skill and display it again and maybe fight with another good striker to see yeah. if you can withstand it and then come back up and take on Pereira and maybe let a few other people get a crack at him. I think Whitaker Pereira would be a good fight. If you had fucking Yoel Romero and Pereira, that would have been an incredible lit. one. Fairly. That would have been an incredible one. Um, who else do you have? Uh, is, I think Paulo Costa, he would have been another good one to see, or even Gilbert Burns, one of these fucking mm. guys. Um, or, dude... How about fucking Kamzat Shemaya versus fucking that guy? They're a similar build. Oh, yeah. Kamzat Shemaya's power is like the Michael Chandler on steroids it's at a very larger dangerous. size. Yeah. Like to just bulldoze people. Um, so that would be an interesting one. I think I think Kamzat Shemaya against anybody in the top five of that middleweight division would be an incredible fight to watch. Um, so in any event, you know, there's a lot of potential for good fights there. But I think I think Izzy needs to kind of air things out a little bit. And just maybe, you know, take a couple of fights where he's showing, all right, now I'm ready, let's let's do this again. Just because of the history of that being their third loss, to go yeah. back and do it right away again, I don't know if that gives you the breathing room to make the adjustments you need to, to make to, you know. And, and to Gizzy's credit, he could have just skipped away the whole time and rode it out to the victory and made, you know, Pereira chase him and... Maybe he was doing that a little bit, but I didn't really know. It wasn't noticeable. I feel like he engaged. He engaged still. Yeah. And that may have been the downfall of things, but nobody wants to see somebody. They There's something about coasting to a victory that people just, it doesn't sit well with most people. They're kind of like. Especially in the championship fight. Let's keep it open for risk the entire time. Uh, we don't want to see you just, you know, backpedaling the whole time or dodging and skipping around like for five minutes. Like. You know, you want to, people want to see risk and danger and fireworks the whole time. So, interesting shit, man. Great night of fights. One of the best I've ever watched. I feel like, you know, out of all the fights I've watched, almost every one of them was a fight of the year candidate. Like, or they had the potential to be up there in, like, top ten fights of the year. They all were. So, go down the UFC, Dana White, and the UFC for everybody putting that together. Um, <clears throat> it was a great end to the evening, and I guess that's all I got to say about that. I, I'm excited for the next one, but one of the best fight cards I've ever watched in my life. From yeah. start to finish. Glad we got to see that live. Great time. And uh, looking forward to the next one. So we'll see when that'll be. We got a lot of holiday events coming up in December. I feel like it's one Christmas party after another. And our souls need a fucking rest because <laughs> we deal with people in our job and they drain us sometimes. Yep. The worst ones drain you bad. And, you know, but you take people as you find them and life's full of different people. You just got to try to learn how to manage your reactions better. It's not always easy to do when you're like us with fucking sleep deprivation and you know constant hard work we're like we i said this to somebody recently we don't think about thoughts and words as like having weight but they are weight and they take they take a lot of strength to to bear them so we're constantly like doing this mental workout to be strong enough to like handle our own problems handle other people's manage our reactions to their problems and the drama and the fucking you know some people in our business they're mono, emotionally manipulative and they try to get a reaction out of you and it's like you got to be able to defend against that and put you know you know manage it sometimes that means maybe not being responsive because you're like i'm not even gonna try to play this fucking game with them because that's where they live all the time and i don't and i don't i don't need to be weighted down with like a fucking weight dragging me backward like fuck that you know or an anchor like trying to anchor me in a bad place so um you know thank you red bull for giving me wings for <laughs> keeping me like fucking my train of thought in a good place during this podcast. I think we did a great fight recap. It was a lot of fun. And, um, you know, so I guess we'll see when the next card is. And is there anything you want to add? Because otherwise I'm going to just go into the outro. That's all I got, man. So go right ahead. All right. Well, uh, you know, thank you everybody out there for listening. I say that, you know, you know, we don't control the world's resources. We don't control, you know, as a people, I don't control, you know, gas or oil or fucking lithium or any of that. But one of the most powerful resources that we have that nobody can take away from us is kindness. It's one of the most powerful resources in the world. It is a universal language. 
and it will allow you to get along with people of every race, color, and background. You could be speaking to somebody who doesn't even really understand English, but if you're smiling while you say it and you do it in a way that your intent is clear, they'll know what you're talking about. And so kindness is free. I know that we've been stuck in this weird place as a people after COVID of just, you know, keeping distance and keeping focused on, you know, health, safety, and all that. But as that fades along and we've we've kind of, been past the point where people are infected and you know we've all gotten vaxxed the fuck out be kind and 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 be good because good people make each other good emotions every single one of them are contagious whether it's happiness anger fear anxiety they're all contagious so try to pick the best ones and and display them out there and be good to yourself so that you can be good to other people so uh, self you know caring for others starts with self-care that you're you're fit and able mentally and physically to help other people out and recharge your batteries And, you know, thank you for listening to the Blessed Life University podcast. May truth and reason prevail. We love you and tune in next time. Peace out. Peace.